Hey guys, let's go in this pocket back to another video. Today we got great news because yesterday Apple has announced their brand new macOS version, macOS Mojave, not Mojave or Mojave. And it comes with some great features and great changes which I would like to show you right now. And of course, as always, share my own opinions about this new update. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So this is macOS version 10.14, not 11 yet, unfortunately. And as you can see, I have installed it on my external hard drive, which is this one, and I have booted it on my Mac. And the way I downloaded it is because I'm part of the Apple developer program, so I pay £100, actually £70 per year. So for this demo, we're going to start off with the desktop. Now, of course, many of you may have a desktop look like this, and even worse. So you may have files everywhere blocking the background on the desktop, which kind of sucks because you cannot locate your files unless you have a creative mind where you can like literally find wherever they are or a great memory where you remember where they are. So Apple finally solved this out. By going to the view menu, going to use stacks, Mojave automatically is going to arrange all of your files depending on their types. So you have here images, by clicking on them you can see all of these files in that stack or even movies. So I have some videos and they're gonna be so up right here. Also my screenshots, I have plenty of screenshots here and they're gonna show up here. Also, if you take another file and then you drop it on the desktop, I'm gonna click on keep both, it's gonna be slide in on where it belongs to. In this case, it was a mini image, it's going to slide in on the image stack. And also by using the scroll wheel, you can scroll through all of the files which are in that stack. And if you want to use one, you can grab it and then put it wherever you want. Mojave can finally understand your location and the time. This means that depending on the time, your background is going to change from dark mode to the ordinary mode. So for example, so when it's evening, then desktop is going to turn into dark mode, which is great because it's much better for the eyes. And also the UI interface is much better. So as you can see the photos, are much more visible and it's much better to work and code if you're a developer as well. To be fair, for the rest of this video I'm gonna keep it in dark mode because I like it much more compared to the ordinary mode. Now let's move on on Finder. Apple finally allows you to see the full metadata on each of your files. By going to the view and then show preview, clicking on a file, it's going to show you the full metadata of that file. Clicking on show more, you're gonna see even more information about your files. Something that for the other versions you had to right click and then click on get info and then that was the only way to see more information about your files but not anymore. Something else I really like is that you have this panel where you can perform some quick actions in your photos. So for example you can rotate left or you can perhaps add some notes on that image. So for example you can click on mockup and then you can add a text if you want. This is so cool and then you can easily resize it or scale it or do your job and you're ready you can click on save also you have the ability to create a pdf file and of course add password by adding password it's not going to allow other people to view the specific file if they don't know the password also you can create a pdf by selecting multiple files but for some reason this doesn't work on my version of mojave i have no idea why but i'm gonna definitely complain this to apple in order to fix this very soon because this is the job of being a beta tester and once you create a pdf if this does work for you then create a pdf and then you have the option to add a watermark on your pdf file everything with a single click next screenshots everyone nowadays love taking screenshots including me on the mac because it's very easy to do you just press three hotkeys command shift and four and then you can literally send them off to someone or, or do whatever you want with them but now Apple has finally updated, adding more features into it. So firstly, you can take a screenshot by using the, the traditional way, so Command, Shift, and 4. And then you can capture the fav your favorite moment that you're going to find out. As you can see, it shows as a thumbnail on here, so you can click on that. Then you can perform some quick actions. Let me actually try and magnify it. I, I would like to see what's going on actually right here. So I'm going to... I'm going to increase the magnifier so I can have a better view and then I'm going to actually I'm going to, I'm going to make it a bit bigger and then I'm going to zoom in. 
and then we're going to click on save. Now, Apple has added more features into it, as I mentioned earlier. By pressing the hotkeys Command, Shift, and 5, you're going to again access the screenshot cursor, but you're also going to have some features in here. So as you can see, you have Capture Selected Window. This is going to capture that window here, Safari. Here's going to capture the entire screen. This is the selected portion, so you just show the traditional way. You're going to select a portion and then capture it. And here you have the ability to record part of your screen. Here you can record the entire screen. So if I click on that, it's going to be the, the capture the entire screen. And here's going to capture a selected portion. I also have options, for example, you have a timer. And you can literally tell where you want the screenshot or the video to be saved. So let's click on record selected portion. So we're going to capture a selected portion I would like to record. Then we're going to click on this window to stop recording. And then it's going to show the video here. So we're going to click it quickly before it disappears. And then, as you can see, you have a preview of what I captured here. Unfortunately, it doesn't have voice recorder, but you can still use QuickTime for that. You can perform a quick edit here. So you can crop part of the video. So for example, I don't want to start because always the, the beginning of the video is bad when you uh, screen recording. And also I don't want the end because I don't want the end. And then I'm going to click on done. And then it's going to show only that portion of this video. And I'll click on save. And the video is stored on my desktop. So I'm going to click on movies. It's going to show somewhere here. Now, if I press on space on the keyboard, then it's going to show a quick view of this video. And then I can crop other video if I want to on a quick view. So this is a great update on screenshots being more powerful. Next, privacy. Now Apple made the ability for someone to track your data even harder. So how they did it, they just made the data more encrypted, making it harder for website to take your data because nowadays, as the tools used by website developers to create more powerful uh, websites, it gives them the ability to get information about your machine and based on that, for example, by taking the fonts, by taking your location, or perhaps the screen size and all this stuff, they can literally uniquely identify you. And then based on that information, they can display ads on the website, but not anymore with Mac OS Mojave. So finally, for the first time ever, you can feel safe while browsing through your favorite website and your favorite news website. Next, iOS to Mac. In the Apple keynote yesterday, Craig answered the question of whether they are trying to integrate Mac OS with iOS. And his answer was a categorically no. They're not going to merge iOS and Mac OS. But they're bringing iOS apps onto the Mac OS. So this includes home, news, stocks, and voice memos. So let's have a look on them. First is news. This design really reminds me how news look on the iPhone or on the iPad because you have the larger screen. So here you have the news, and here you have the categories of what happening today, uh, top stories, which is not available in the UK at the moment, but it's going to be soon. And next you have series, so what are uh, series suggestions? So for example, we can have a look on entertainment. You can see some news about entertainment and things like this. Next we have stocks. So as you can see now, stocks are in the side, but here you have all the stories about stocks. So for example, you can see about Microsoft, what happened with Microsoft stocks, or perhaps with other companies here as well. And finally, Apple has brought voice memos on the Mac. Now you can finally record your own voice, your own music or anything else you want on your Mac device. So let's try it out. So as you have redesigned the interface, it really looks like the iPhone or the iOS app. But as you can see, of course, it's compatible with Mac as well. And then once you're done, you can click on done. And it's going to be automatically saved on here. Next, we have Home. Unfortunately, I don't really use Home that much, but the screen looks very similar to the app on iOS. If you're using Home, then welcome this app on your Mac computer. Finally, Apple has redesigned the App Store. Now, according to Apple, they have built it from the ground up again. So they built it from the beginning. To be honest, I prefer the new design because it's more organized and it looks more like 
a modern design or even a futuristic design of UI user interface and it's a lot easier to use because you can easily navigate through the categorize or these options here so for example you can go to update or you can go to categorize to find your favorite games or health apps or entertainment or anything like that and now to prove that Apple is bringing iOS apps on the Mac by allowing the developers to use some frameworks which allow them to build apps for the iPhone to build apps on the Mac. So that means that it's going to save a bunch of time for the developers if they want to build apps on the iPhone which can also work on the Mac OS as well. So now to build a Mac OS app, you're normally going to use the AppKit framework. But now Apple has added some frameworks from the UI kit, which is a framework allowing you to build apps for the iOS onto Mac OS. And this is how they allow you to run apps on the iOS on your Mac as well. Also another small announcement is that Microsoft has announced that it's going to bring Office 360 on the Mac. So you can go ahead on the App Store and download it from there. And that's all for now. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to hit the like button if you like this video. Drop a comment, let me know whether you're gonna update to macOS Mojave or you're gonna stay with the current version which is macOS High Sierra or if it doesn't support your Mac model, whether you're gonna buy a new model or not in the near future. Share this with your friends and as always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so in order to stay tuned with our latest updates. Thanks for watching and as always, I'm gonna see you to my next video.